Today, we will once again take a look at interesting footage that captures a moment. Ukrainian troops' FPV drones easily blow up Russian forces west of Avdivka. Heavy Ukrainian drones working in tandem with Kyiv's notorious first-person view FPV, drones are proving extremely dangerous for Russian forces in the war-torn country, according to the former head of Russia's space agency. Ukraine is matching heavy, large attack drones known as Baba Yaga drones with FPV uncrewed aerial vehicles UAVs, that fly in pairs at night to make up entire squadrons of drones, former Roscosmos head Dmitry Rogozin said in a post to messaging app Telegram. The night sky above Ukraine is teeming with enemy drones, Rogozin said, adding that the Baba Yaga is extremely dangerous for Russian troops. Baba Yaga drones are large, multi-purpose Ukrainian uncrewed aerial vehicles UAVs, often designed as quadcopters, hexacopters and octocopters, according to Samuel Bendet of the US think tank CNA. The more than 25 months of war in Ukraine has spurred rapid drone development, and Kyiv has been innovative in its wielding of unmanned technology in the air, on land and in the water. FPV drones quickly became almost emblematic of Ukraine's efforts with UAVs. They can be used to record dramatic battlefield footage where the drone careens toward Russian vehicles before exploding, or deployed as reconnaissance tools to guide artillery strikes. Mikhailo Fedorov, Kyiv's Minister of Digital Transformation, heading up Ukraine's drone efforts against Russia, told media in December that they work sometimes even more efficiently than artillery. Ukrainian side constantly trying to gain the advantage in the drone war, pouring resources into development while at once mass-producing and deploying various drone types, Kyiv are thought to burn through hundreds of drones each day. Ukraine has been deploying Baba Yaga drones under the cover of darkness. Once many of its FPV drones are pulled back or used, the Baba Yaga drones fly at about 60 km per hour, or about 37 miles per hour, Rogozin said, but FPVs are nimble and faster. It is far harder to defend against UAVs at night, Bendet told media, adding that Russia does not yet have a comparable drone able to carry the same munitions at night. While the Baba Yaga's size means that they can carry substantial munitions that are menacing Russian forces, he said. We know Russians are either fixing the downed Baba Yagas and fly them as their own, and they are trying to build an equivalent of this drone, but Ukrainians are experts in flying these UAVs, Bendet said. Pairing up a light drone to attack a target before the Baba Yaga releases its explosives is a Ukrainian tactic in this war, he added. For now, Russia has lost hundreds of vehicles of various types in the past week, according to figures from Ukraine's military, as fighting rages on in eastern Ukraine. On Thursday, the military said Russia had lost five tanks, 12 armored personnel vehicles, and an additional 50 vehicles and fuel tanks in the past day. While in the past seven days, Russia has lost 119 tanks, 293 armored personnel vehicles and 437 cars and fuel tanks, according to Ukraine's general staff of the armed forces. Russian vehicle losses throughout the more than 25 months of war have been extensive, but Moscow has mobilized its defense industry to keep rolling out vehicles to replenish its fleet in Ukraine. Meanwhile, main battle tanks and armored vehicles are critical for mechanized warfare, and fuel tanks are essential for keeping them up and running in battle. In February, the International Institute for Strategic Studies, a UK-based think tank, estimated that Moscow had lost more than 3,000 tanks in the two years of war, more than its entire pre-war active fleet. Ukraine's estimates of Russia's tank losses are even higher, topping 7,000. To backfill its stocks, Moscow has increased its tank production fivefold since February 2022, Russian President Vladimir Putin said earlier this year.
At this time, the Kremlin has also pulled old tanks out of storage and repurposed antiquated vehicles to ferry and detonate explosives around a target. In the initial stages of the full-scale war, Russia lost a slew of its tanks and armored vehicles, largely because of what analysts described as organizational and planning failures, broken chains of command and poor training. Heavy casualties in the first weeks left gaping expertise holes in Russia's tank crews, experts previously told media. Drawn-out battles have also brought spikes in Russian tank and armored vehicle losses, while the battle for the Donetsk town of Vuledar was described by Ukrainian officials in March 2023 as the biggest tank battle of the war so far. Russian vehicle losses quickly became a defining part of the Kremlin's attack on Avdivka, the strategic Donetsk city that Moscow captured in February this year, but Ukraine posted images purportedly showing damaged and destroyed vehicles strewn across fields around Avdivka. Within weeks of the initial onslaught on Avdivka in October 2023, Russia switched to more infantry-led attacks to conserve armored vehicles following the first two waves of assaults on the settlement, the Institute for the Study of War, a U.S. think tank, said this past December. While in late March, Russia launched a large tank and armored vehicle assault on the village of Tonanki, directly west of Avdivka, and the convoy was successfully repelled by Ukrainian forces, by deploying drone attacks and artillery fire against Russian infantry positions. Meanwhile, the United States has delivered over 5,000 firearms and hundreds of thousands of rounds to Ukraine's military after obtaining the weapons from Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC. According to U.S. Central Command, over 5,000 Alaska 47S machine guns, sniper rifles and RPG-7s were sent to the Ukrainian armed forces last week, alongside 500,000 rounds of ammunition. The equipment is enough to arm one Ukrainian brigade, but weapons will help Ukraine defend against Russia's invasion.